Hey everyone, my name is Alicia and this is Double A Homestead. Today we are in the garden, but only for so long because what we're going to be doing today is we are pressure canning green beans. Yeah, well, not technically green beans, but a mixture of beans. We have purple, yellow, and green beans. But before we do anything, I have to harvest these beans today so we can get those inside and I can show you how I pressure can these and we can get these up for the winter. I have my baskets, my kangaroo keeper, which I absolutely love. So I don't have to keep carrying the basket with me. I just put it in my little pouch and when it's full, I carry it to the basket. But I recruited Andrew today to help me out because there are so many beans. I think we have 115 feet of beans total. So that's a quite a few. I have already pressure canned about 30 jars of green beans and I'm hoping to do a little bit more just so I know that I have enough for this winter. So enough of me talking, let's get to harvesting these beans. We are down two rows, which is fabulous. We are almost done. We've got one more row that we need to go. We have four rows in total, but the row behind me is specifically for dilly beans, not pressure canning. So we're not really worried about that at this moment. Now, a few things I do want to go over when you are harvesting your beans. Sometimes you may get funky ones that do look like this how they're bigger at the base, um, and all that means is just it's inconsistent in watering. Um, we, I try not to water too much just because we have such clay soil, it tends to hold in that water, but that's what this just tells you is going on. It's not a disease or anything that you really need to worry about just to watch your watering. So we have moved to the porch and I figured because even though it is a little humid, it's really not that bad out. So I figured I would enjoy the scenery at least while I'm snapping beans. We are finally in the kitchen and I have my setup here with everything that I need and I'm just going to go over that with you. You are going to want your magnet. This is going to help you with your lids and then you are going to want your debubbler also has a measure on here and then your funnel that's going to help you get the, any liquid or contents in the jar more easily. Of course, your lids, your bands, and then I am going to be putting salt in here. So I have my salt set to the side and then a ladle to help get the liquid into the jars. Now I do want to mention before anything else that this is the only safe way that you are able to can beans. Water bath canning beans is not uh, a safe method or a tested recipe for beans. 
only pressure canning is. It's going to kill all of that bacteria in there so you don't have to worry about getting sick or botulism or anything like that. So the first thing that you're going to be doing is you're going to be getting your jars. The recipe does call for pints, but I'm going to be using quarts. It just makes sense for us just because of the fact that we have a family of four and pints are not big enough and it's just going to take up more room in the storage than what uh, we have. So it's easier for us to use quarts. So once you get your jars, of course, you are going to wash them along with your lids and your bands. Once you have those, you don't have to worry about drying them. I just have it all set out here in rows. I'm actually going to be raw packing these. It is much easier than doing it. There are a few other ways. I've never done it the other way. I've always done raw pack just because it's so much quicker and takes up less time. Now for raw pack, basically what you're doing is you are putting the beans in here completely raw and then putting boiling water over them which I have on the stove behind me versus if you were going to do hot pack you would boil the beans for a little while and then put them in the jars. So after you have your jars washed the next thing I'm going to be doing is getting my funnel which I showed you and then we are going to be filling these jars. Now I know it for my pressure canner that I can only fit six jars at a time so that's what we're going to do. What we're going to be doing next is putting salt in the bottom of these jars. It is optional, you don't have to do that. Uh, we prefer that, it just gives it a little bit of a better flavor. And I'm going to be doing one teaspoon for quart jars. If you were to do pint jars, it would be half a teaspoon. Now the salt that I'm using is going to be just canning salt. What I need to do next is I need to make sure that there is two inches of water in this pressure canner before I do anything else. Now I am using very hot water for this so when it heats up it already has really hot water in here hoping that it is um, taking lesser time for it to get up to pressure. Now for this canner, because I have used it a few times, I can see that there is already a rim around there that helps me figure out how much water is in here and how that meets uh, two inches. But just to make sure you're at two inches, I've got a handy dandy tape measure here and I just go ahead and stick that right in there and see how much water I have in. I'm about an inch and a half so I need some more water. Let's go ahead and see where we are at. Just need a little bit more water and then we are good. You didn't see me put this in here, but there is down at the bottom a liner from the actual pot where I put the jars on so they're not sitting directly on the bottom. I would show you, but this is really hot water and I don't want to burn my hands but you do want something at the bottom of your pressure canner. It should already have one when you buy one. Now that my water is done boiling, I'm going to go ahead and fill these jars. Now I measured these up to one inch head space. You can't see it on here, at least I don't think you can. There are measurements on these little uh, checks here, and this just tells you how far usually when you're canning you about have a half inch headspace this one requires one inch and in headspace which is going to be all the way or sorry all the way over here so we want to measure these and make sure that we are at a one inch, one inch headspace and we are for most for all these jars so I'm going to take my ladle and I'm going to ladle this hot boiling water and I lay a towel underneath all of this that way if I was to spill anything I've got this little towel here to prevent 
hitting the counter. Now I'm not going to measure the headspace on here until after I'm done filling all of these. It's easier to fill all of them at once and then measure afterwards. Now that those are filled, I'm going to go ahead and measure for that one inch head space. And if I have too much liquid in these jars, I can take a little spoon here and just take out some of that. Now the reason why you want to make sure that you are good on your head space because when they are in the pressure canner, things are going to expand and you want to leave enough room for when the, you know, it expands. The next thing that I need to do that's very important is I need to deep bubble these jars. And that just means getting all the bubbles out. And the reason why you want to do that is because what's going to happen is if you forget that, it's going to make a less or of a seal if that makes sense. Whereas if I get the bubbles out, it's going to seal better. You won't have a problem in the future of possibly losing that seal on that jar. So that's why we get the bubbles out of there. And we'll go ahead and do that. And then after we do this, then we're going to go ahead and wipe the rims down on here. And I do that with just a piece of paper towel and then just wipe all of these down. I have seen where people do use vinegar to wipe these down. I just use a regular dry paper towel. After we have those rims clean, we're going to put on our lid and then band on top of that. Now with the lids, you only want to put these on finger tight. What's going to happen is if you don't put these on finger tight, and which I mean by tighter, your lid is going to collapse, and we don't want that. So just, just enough there. These jars are ready to go in the pressure canner. You can use something like this. This just grips your jars and you can carry it like this. We're going to be using this in the future to get these jars out of the pressure canner, but I'm not going to be using them to put them in the pressure canner just because they're not too terribly hot and I'm not worried about burning myself. So let's get these jars in that pressure canner. So the trick to putting these jars in is when you put them in, you're trying to get them where they're not going to touch each other. Like I had mentioned, I can fit about six jars in here really well, and there is enough room in between each jar. Okay, so I oopsied. I know I said six jars, but I can actually fit seven jars in here, and I can fit them in pretty comfortably. And you can see that they are not touching each other. That's just going to give them some room because they are going to move inside here. Now that we have our beans in the pressure canner, we're going to go ahead and put this lid on next. And then we're going to go ahead and turn our stove on. We're going to turn it on as high as it can go. There. So while this is coming to pressure, I did want to go over a few things with you on my canner. Now this is a Presto canner. I'm not 100% sure what size it is. I don't remember, unfortunately. 
this little black dot that we have in the front, that is going to be your safety seal. If anything was to happen, that is going to pop and depressurize your camera. You can see here, this is our little spout. That is where we are going to put our weighted gauge, which you see here on that canner. And then we also have this gauge here. And you're supposed to get it tested every year. You can go to your uh, extension office and they will do that for you for free. And what this is going to tell me is how many pounds I need of pressure to can these beans. So each recipe requires a different um, amount. This one I know requires 11. And you can't see it now, I will show you. There is in the very back, it's going to be basically a pin gauge. What happens is, is when this pot comes to pressure, it's going to pop up. And when it is depressurized, it's going to go down. This part of the process takes some time. Yes, the process to get here was a lot quicker, but I find that this process takes more time than what I would to water bath. So as we're waiting for this to come up to pressure, I'll go over a few things with you. Now, I know I did mention in the beginning that this is the only safe and tested recipe for green beans. Now, of course, there are other recipes that require vinegar, which gives it acidity to make it safe to water bath can. But because these are by themselves with only hot water, that's why this is the only safe recipe. I did pick this up at my um, NSU extension office. This is going to be uh, what you can get at yours. It should be ready available. This tells you everything about how to pressure can green beans. And you can see it's got here for snap beans, green, purple, or yellow, how to freeze, uh, pressure canning, quality, fresh storage recommendation. And on the back side, this is where you're going to get all of your information. This is going to tell you uh, pines quartz, processing time. Actually, for quartz, it is 25 minutes. I know that I want 11 pounds per pressure, and it does tell you this is going to be your altitude. So it's very important that you figure out what your altitude is so you know exactly how much that you need PSI for that so you can can them properly. And we do have two. One is for a weighted gauge, which I have here, and one is for a digital gauge. A few things that you can do while you're waiting for this whole process, you can set up your next line of beans that you're going to can. You can get all of that ready. Trust me, you have plenty of time. You have all of that set up. So once those beans come out, you can get those right in the canner and get that next process going. Now that that gauge is up, you can see I'm getting more of a steady stream out of that little spout. So I'm going to go ahead and set a 10 minute timer. My timer went off for 10 minutes. So now we're going to go ahead and put the weighted gauge on. And it goes on just like that. So it's a little bit quieter now, but that gauge is going to be your 10 pound pressure gauge. Now, depending on your elevation, you're going to want to figure out which one is best for your elevation. Now that we have the weighted gauge on, what's going to happen, this dial is going to go up. Now I want this at 11 pounds, and that uh, weighted gauge is going to start jiggling at some point also. Once I kind of get around 9, maybe 8 pounds or so, I am going to go ahead and start adjusting the heat. You don't want to go over too far past 11, but you don't want to go under the 11 pounds just because if you go under 11 pounds you're going to have to restart that processing time all over again so if you're because this requires 25 minutes if you are at 20 minutes and you happen to go under that 11 pounds you're going to have to start at 25 minutes all over again now as far as going over it's okay if you're a couple pounds over you don't have to worry so much as that. I mean, you don't want to go all the way up to like 15 and over. That's a little high. If you're, you know, at 12 or 13, I would say 13 is probably the max that you want to go. You can see that the pressure is going up. I'm getting close to 
the five markings. But I do want to let you guys know that there honestly is nothing to be nervous or scared about. I don't want this to deter you from processing with a pressure canner. But I want to reassure you that as long as you follow the steps, everything will be okay. Our timer went off for the 25 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the heat off. But this part of the process takes a little bit longer. If you have anything that you need to do, um, now is the time to do it to prep that next batch to get that in the canner to go. Me personally, it's pretty late. I'm already at 10 o'clock right now. I'm exhausted, so I am not doing another batch after this. So once this is done, we'll bring you back and show you the next step. The pin has dropped. Now I can remove this weighted gauge here. And I am going to open this lid. You want to be cautious when you're opening this lid because steam is going to come out. So you can do it with oven mitts or whatever you prefer. But I do want to warn you. Try to open it facing the other way. And then I leave the lid on and I'm going to let that sit for about a minute or so, and then I'm going to take the jars out. The reason why we wait is because I don't want the air difference between the heat and the cool air to siphon those jars. So that's why I leave the lid on for a little bit, and that is recommended that you leave the lid on for about two minutes, but I tend to wait about five. So now that it's been that long, let's go ahead and take these jars out. And this is where this little thing comes into play. I'm honestly not sure what it's called. I'll have to look into it and link it down below. But this just helps get those jars out. Now that they're hot, we don't have to touch them by hand. It would be impossible at that point. And you can see that this jar is bubbling. That is completely normal. And you will hear pings. You can also see how I was talking about how you want to pack those beans down more because there is going to be room. Now this is going to settle, so just do the best that you can. Now that these jars are done and they are on the counter, I would suggest that you lay a towel on your counter. That way there is a protection from the jar to the counter. These jars are very hot when they come out, even after letting that settle for a while. Now, after you get those out of your pressure canner, what you're going to do is, after you get them on the towel, you want to give them enough space in between each jar to uh, allow them to cool. You don't want to touch these for about 12 to 24 hours, the recommendation. I typically leave these alone for 24 hours. After that period, you are going to remove the bands on these jars and then put them up for storage. Now you want to check on them periodically in that time period to make sure that they have uh, suctioned properly because if you let them go too far on the counter, then you are not able to save them if they don't seal properly and put them in the fridge to eat them for, you know, the next day or so. That about does it for today. It is pretty late. It took about, um, just to run this, I think I started about a little before 9 o'clock. It's 11 o'clock now. So it does take you quite a bit of time to uh, pressure can these. Now, it's not so much the processing, it's getting up to that point. I've been doing this all day from picking the beans to snapping them, washing them, and prepping everything to get them in the pressure canner. So it definitely is a lot of work, but it's absolutely rewarding going downstairs and being able to get a can of beans that I've grown myself for a future dinner. 
I want to thank you so much for joining me on this video and coming into my kitchen and joining me today and hopefully you were able to learn something about processing beans in a fresher canner. I really enjoyed having you along for the ride today. And as always, to help us out, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We would really appreciate that. And I plan on in the future having more canning videos, so definitely keep an eye out for those. Alright, we'll see you on the next one. Take care.